In my opinion, the best and simplest way to think of enthalpy is to associate it with heat. However, tech welcome ladies and gentlemen, today we're going over enthalpy and chemistry. If this piques your interest, let's be real, this doesn't pique anyone's interest, but stick around because it is essential to understand to be an exceptional chemist. For example, modern air conditioning or refrigeration wouldn't be possible without the understanding of enthalpy. These systems rely on the transfer of heat, enthalpy, to create a cooling effect. Essentially, they're on vapor compression cycles, which use a refrigerant that undergoes phase changes from liquid to gas, and then back to liquid in a closed system. During these phase changes, the enthalpy of the system changes significantly, allowing for the absorption and release of heat. We'll go over the specifics of AC, with a great example of its cooling effects later in the video once enthalpy is explained a bit more. In my opinion, the best and simplest way to think of enthalpy is to associate it with heat. However, technically, heat is defined in the equation for change in energy with delta E equals Q plus W, where Q equals heat added to or taken from the system, and W equals work done by or on the system. Enthalpy in chemistry is a measure of a to the total energy of a thermodynamic system. It includes the internal energy and the energy established from pressure acting on the system's volume. Enthalpy is a state function, a property that only depends on a system's current condition, not how it got there, like temperature or pressure, and is denoted by the symbol H. I find it easiest to remember it being H by emphasizing the TH in enthalpy. It's defined as H equals E plus PV, where H is enthalpy, E is the internal energy of the system, P is the pressure of the system, and V is the volume of the system. Enthalpy is particularly useful in scenarios where pressure is held constant, such as in many chemical reactions happening in open container containers in laboratories, because under constant pressure, the change in enthalpy, delta H, equals the heat absorbed or released by the system. This is why I particularly think of it as heat. Let's prove this through some equations. The equation when pressure is constant is delta H equals delta E plus P delta V. When we insert our previous equation of delta E into this, we get delta H equals heat plus work plus P times delta V. According to the pressure volume work equation, which relates the work done by or on a system during a volume change under pressure, W equals negative P times delta V. Plugging this into the delta H equation, we just get delta H equals Q heat. So the change in enthalpy is heat. However, pressure has to be constant. Now that we know a bit more about enthalpy, let's go over the air conditioning example. As stated previously, AC works on vapor compression cycles, which use a refrigerant that undergoes phase changes that facilitates the transfer of heat. The key stages of the cycles where enthalpy plays a cooling role is in the evaporation stage, similar to sweating. Inside the evaporator coil, the liquid refrigerant absorbs heat from the environment like water in a glass that gets warmer and evaporates, turning from a liquid to a vapor. This process involves a significant increase in enthalpy as the refrigerant absorbs heat, resulting in a cooling effect on the surrounding area. So let's look at the numbers behind a typical AC unit. The enthalpy required to change propane, a highly efficient refrigerant from liquid to gas at its boiling point of negative 42.1 degrees Celsius or negative 43.8 degrees Fahrenheit, is about 428 joules. But that doesn't really tell you much about temperature changes, so we need an equation for that. The formula to calculate the change in temperature, delta T, when a certain amount of heat, Q, in joules is added or re removed from a mass, M in grams, of a substance is delta T equals Q divided by M times C, where C is the specific heat capacity in joules per gram, which is 2.22 joules per gram Kelvin for liquid propane. Plugging these numbers into the equation for 20 grams of propane, this might not seem like much, but in its gaseous state, it's approximately 10 liters. Delta T equals 428 divided by 20 grams times 2.22 joules per gram Kelvin equals 9.64 degrees Kelvin, which equals degrees Celsius. Converting that to Fahrenheit is close to 50 degrees. This change of approximately 10 degrees Celsius or 50 degrees Fahrenheit is what allows the refrigeration to work because the AC unit can blow air over the colder propane, which cools that air, 
that then pumps into your room. Keep in mind that this is just one stage. The gaseous propane needs to be condensed down to a liquid so the cycle repeats. To do this, the vaporized propane is compressed by a compressor, which increases its pressure as well as its temperature, which the AC unit needs to get rid of. To do this, it sends the hot propane to a condenser where the propane transfers its heat to air that is then pumped outside. That is why on any AC unit, there is also a discharge of hot air or the AC unit itself feels warm. From there, the high pressure liquid propane passes through an expansion valve back to the evaporator coil, whereas pressure drops suddenly leading to a decrease in temperature and enthalpy to start the cooling process again. All of this might seem like it doesn't relate to chemistry at all, so why then talk about it? I'm bringing this up because during a chemical reaction, there are changes in the heat exchange of the molecules, which we call enthalpies of reactions, sometimes referred to as heat of reactions. Chemists define this as delta H equals H products minus H reactants, where H products is the total enthalpy of the products and H reactants is the total enthalpy of the reactants. There are several types of enthalpy changes associated with chemical reactions. Some of these include enthalpy of formation, delta HF. This is the heat change that occurs when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements in their standard states. Enthalpy of combustion, delta HC. The heat change that occurs when one mole of a substance is completely burned in oxygen. Enthalpy of solution, the heat change associated with the dissolution of a substance in a solvent. Enthalpy of neutralization, delta H newt, the heat change that occurs when an acid and a base react to form water and a salt. Enthalpies of reactions are used in chemistry for a variety of important purposes. Some of these include predicting the reaction fe feasibility or determining exothermic slash endothermic reactions. For this, Chemists assess whether a reaction is exothermic, delta H is less than zero, or endothermic, delta H is greater than zero. Using these, chemists can gauge the spontaneity of a reaction under certain conditions. Although entropy and temperature also play a significant role in determining spontaneity through Gibbs free energy, which we'll discuss at a later time. Energy management. Understanding energy changes in chemical reactions allow chemists and engineers to design processes that are energy efficient either by minimizing energy input for endothermic reactions or harnessing energy released from exothermic reactions. There are some safety considerations. Knowing the enthalpy changes can help in assessing the risk of thermal runaway exothermic reactions. Reaction optimization. In industrial chemistry, understanding enthalpies helps in optimizing reaction conditions like temperature and pressure to maximize the yield and minimize energy consumption. Chemical bond analysis. Changes in enthalpy can give insights into the strength of chemical bonds formed and broken during a reaction. This contributes to a deeper understanding of molecular interactions and even helps with understanding of reaction mechanisms. The study of enthalpies of reactions is fundamental in both theoretical and applied chemistry, enabling scientists to predict, control, optimize chemical reactions for various practical and research purposes. I hope this explanation helps. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask, and if you found value in the video, please like it and let people know about the channel because it really does help spread the knowledge. Based on what you learned, think about the following question. When can you associate enthalpy as heat? Thank you so much for spending your valuable time learning and bettering yourself. If you like the video and want to learn more, donate, or get tutoring, please check out my website, nocollegeneeded.org. You can use the code NCN for 20% off tutoring and any supplemental materials. If the subject isn't up yet, please be patient. I'm working on bringing them up as soon as I can.